praise the Lord and good morning to everyone today. I pray that you're blessed and you're healed and you're whole and you're ready to give God praise and glory and worship his name. Let's give God glory in the house. Hallelujah. Let the devil know that we're more than conquerors this morning. That everything is working together for our good. So good morning to all of you here at Integrity Bible Church. And also those that are viewing and watching us this morning on by uh, social media, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, uh, our website. Thank you for tuning in. We want you to relax this morning and rest in the things of God and know that all is well. Before we pray this morning, I want to encourage you. I'd like to do that. I want to encourage you this morning that I know this year has been a year, but that's okay. This too shall pass. God has greater things for your lives. I know the enemy has tried to tempt you in all kinds of ways, saying that you won't make it or do something illegal or something uh, 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 contrary to the will of God. But you've got to stand strong and trust God. His word says over in 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 13, it says, There's no temptation that has come upon you that is coming to man. But God is faithful, and he will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able but he will give, uh, give you a way to escape and to bear it. So whatever you've been going through and been tempting you and saying you cannot, you won't make it, the devil is a lot in the name of Jesus. The word of God is true. It's already done. God has greater things ahead for you. So stand strong on the word of God. Relax this morning. Rest in God. Have your spirit ready to hear the word of God and ready to go forth in Jesus' name. Now may we bow our heads and pray. Father, we bless you this morning. We honor you. We lift your name up for your name is great and greatly to be praised. You said let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we praise and honor you this morning for our God is great. God, we thank you that you're with us. You said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You're ordering our steps. And we thank you, dear God, that we'll not stumble, we'll not fall before our eyes are on you. Now, God, we lift up this world before you. We lift up the nations of this world. Thank you, dear God, that you are Lord over all in Jesus' name. Father, we thank and praise you right now. You're our shepherd. We shall not want. There's no lack in our lives. And as we lift up the United States of America, a great country, dear God, we thank you that Jesus is the Lord no matter what. You told us to always pray, first of all, to pray for all those in authority, all men and all those in leadership. And we lift them up before you, Father, from the White House down to our own houses and our leaders in the name of Jesus. We pray for our leaders and our government, every branch of it, Father federal, on the federal level, the state, the local. We thank you, dear God, that they'll work orderly, that they'll do your will, that they'll do their jobs properly. We thank you for all the aged and everybody around those in the White House, people of wisdom, saved, full of the Holy Ghost, that know how to pray, that speak in life over our country. Our country will endure in the name of Jesus. We're built on a foundation. And Father, we thank you for your presence. We come against the spirit of idolatry. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. You're so good to us that we want to say thank you. And Father God, we lift up those that are still maybe hurting. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, they've lost jobs. But I thank you, dear God, they know that you're with them today. Give them a place of miracle in their lives. Those that are still suffering, going through this COVID, dear God, I thank and praise that those on ventilators right now. Holy Spirit, breathe into their bodies. Breathe into their lungs right now. We pray cut their uh, respiratory systems in Jesus' name. Pray for their families that have lost loved ones. I pray strength, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we just bless you right now. We lift up the body of Christ before you. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we repent even as, a, as the body, as the church. If we felt we dropped the ball anywhere along the line, we ask you to forgive us of our sin. Father, we thank you for purging us, pruning us, preparing us for greater things that we're ready. We'll not reject your glory. We'll not reject the change. You say old things will pass away. You're doing a new thing. And we'll not reject the new thing in Jesus' name. Have your way in the church, in the body of Christ. Restoration over the local church, Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, increase in their memberships. Increase right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray for integrity by the church. We thank you for anointed ministry that you've ordained, appointed, and anointed from the foundation of the world to do great things in this nation, in our city, in our surrounding areas. So Father, we thank you for our leadership in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you said we're increasing spiritually, numerically, financially. You're sending people in from the north, south, east, and west. West, St. Lucifer, let them go. They've been ordained by God to be a part of this ministry. And we thank you. Money cometh, supernatural, financial miracles in the homes, Father, and in our lives in Jesus' name. 
in our ministries. Now, Father God, we lift up Pastor Hennington and Sister Lady Hennington. We thank you for them, Father. In Jesus' name, help them heal them wholeness. We thank you for the word that you place in his heart to minister to us today. The ones that are here and those that are viewing that their lives will never be the same. Saying that they know that you've got help. And that's in the name of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, have your way as you use our man of God today. We decree and declare that we'll have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord your God to speak. Holy Spirit, speak. Your servant shall hear and we will obey. Now, Father, we thank you. We decree that we're blessed. We're blessed when we go out. We're blessed when we come in. In the name of Jesus. Father, you're our strength, our refuge, your present help in a time of need. According to our Psalms 46 and 1. We thank you. And we look to the hills. We look to you, God. You are our support. We decree a thing. You said we can decree a thing. And it shall be established to us. And the light shall shine on our ways. Father, we thank you right now. We love you. We adore you. In the name of Jesus, we pray in you. You lift up every bow down here. We'll be lifted up this morning. Everybody heal. In the name of Jesus. Father, in, the, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Our children are blessed. Our young people are blessed. Thank you for restoration over our nation. Restoring our minds. We pull down negative thoughts right now. And we speak life. For God, you're a God that cannot lie. You say, you're a God that cannot lie. You tell them you're a God of truth. Every man be alive but you be true. Everything you've spoken is shall come to pass. So we stand on your word today. We stand in your power. We stand in your anointing in the name of Jesus. And we take on our authorization, our, our authorization. That name, that precious name of Jesus. Father, we bless you right now. We serve the devil. Notice that he's a defeated foe. He has no place in our lives. We are more than constant. We take that word and we use that word. We have the whole arm of God to stand against and attack of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. God, as a result of your word being sure, a solid foundation, this is the confidence that we have in you. That if we pray anything according to your will and your way and your word, you hear us. And since we know you hear us when we pray, we have those petitions that we desire you. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Give God glory. Praise his name. He's worthy. Amen. Amen.
closer than close. I mean, that means you're all wrapped up, tangled up in the Lord. Amen. We bless you, Lord. Why don't you lift your hands for me? Those who are here, those who are viewing the podcast, just lift your hands if you're able to. And just tell the Lord that you love him. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Go ahead and worship you. We worship you, God. You're the only true living God. There is none like you, dear Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you. 
and we bless you and we honor you. Thank you for being here with us, oh God. Being with us, in us, never leaving us or forsaken us. We bless you, Lord, and we welcome you into the sanctuary of all our hearts. We adore you, Jesus. It's in Jesus' name. Well, the Holy Spirit, who's also referred to by the names in the scripture, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, Spirit of Wisdom. The Holy Spirit is actually the third person of the Godhead. The third person of the Godhead. That's who the Holy Spirit is. He's the third person of the Godhead. In Matthew 28, if you want to turn there, Matthew 28, verse 19, the scripture talks about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. These three make up the Godhead God the Father, the Father, the preeminent one, the God of love and grace, who sent his son Jesus to die for the sins of the world. Then after Jesus came and fulfilled his ministry, he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is still at work today in the earth. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the guy here, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Colossians. the book of Colossians and look at chapter 2 of Colossians because when I use terms as a pastor I like for you to see it in your Bible so you can have an understanding 
in the book of Colossians, chapter 2. I'm looking at verse 9. Now, in this entire chapter, is talking about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It talks about being rooted and built up in him in verse 7. And, and it goes on to say in verse 9, say, for in him, talking about Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, all this, all that they are dwelt in Jesus. It says, in him, for look at verse 9, I want you to see that term. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, finally. Some may never have, uh, have never looked at the term Godhead, but it's actually in Scripture. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are referred to as the Godhead. Saying in Jesus dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily is what it's talking about. But I just wanted you to see the term Godhead. Because the Holy Spirit is the third personality of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit and his ministry today. That's what we're the Holy Spirit and his ministry. Let's um, go a little bit further in dealing with the Holy Spirit. Um, let's look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want you to turn to St. John, the 14th chapter. If you would, turn your Bibles to St. John. We're going to look and see some of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's so much controversy about this subject, and it always has been, and I understand that. But nevertheless, we're going to deal with it and see what the Bible has to say about it. of the Holy Spirit. St. John, the 14th chapter, and look at verse 16. It says, And I will pray the Father. This is Jesus saying, I'm going to pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, notice that it said another comforter. The reason why it stated another because Jesus was their comforter while he was there with them. Say, but I'm going to pray that the Father give you another comforter. So one attribute of the Holy Spirit is that he's a comforter. He helps us in our times of trouble, in our times of weakness. He helps us. He comforts us and keeps our hearts at peace. And Jesus said, I'm going to pray to Father that he's going to give you another comforter. Um, we're looking at some of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. He's a comforter. That he may abide, in the latter part of verse 16, that he may abide with you forever. Another attribute is the Holy Spirit abides with us. He abides with us. He comforts us, and he abides with us. It's another attribute of the Holy Spirit. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So we see the Holy Spirit dwells with us and we see the Holy Spirit is in us. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. Comes inside of our spirit. He's with us and he's in us. Um, 
St. John 14 chapters is filled with so many truths about the Holy Spirit. Um, look at verse 26 of the 14th chapter. Say, but the Comforter, and we know that the Comforter is Holy Spirit, that's one of uh, his ministry functions, is to comfort us. But the Comforter, and it tells us, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. That's another function and ministry of the Holy Spirit is to teach you all things and to bring all things to your remembrance that God has taught you. You may have heard something or teaching back when you were a teenager. Well, the Holy Spirit will bring that back to your remembrance, something that helped you in life at that time or something that will help you now that you heard at that time. So we need the Holy Spirit because he's there comforting us. He's teaching us all things. This is why you don't have to be afraid to take a new job or position or something because the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about to take the job and you have to do new functions because the Holy Spirit would teach you if you would depend on him and ask him. The Holy Spirit will teach you things. He'll bring all things back to your remembrance. Ah, this is good for school students. When you're in class listening to the instructor and you're reading at home, studying and preparing for a test, the Holy Spirit will bring things back to your remembrance. Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm expecting you to bring all this, this information back to my remembrance so that I can do well on my test, so, so that I can fulfill my job duty, my, my instructions that I'm supposed to fulfill. So we see the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. He'll bring things back to our remembrance. In uh, John the 16th chapter, just a chapter over, and in verse eight, it says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. So he, that's another one of his functions. So he will reprove the world of sin. This is something that he'll do. In John the 15th chapter, look at verse 26. It says, but when the comforter has come, whom I will send unto you, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify me, though the Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. And he may do that through people, of course, but he's going to always give testimony of Jesus. So this is another one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 16 of St. John, verse 13, which we've just seen this trait, but it brings it out again. So how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, and look at these different terms, and we'll look at this a little further, these different terms. That the Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Wisdom, but all of these terms refer to the Holy Ghost. To how be it when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. Once again, He'll guide you into all truth. This is why you want the Holy Spirit in your life, because you want to be guided in all truth. As you're dealing in life, Lord, should I make this investment? Should I change? career paths? Should I move into this home? Or should I take this job? Is this the right person for me to be my wife or to be my husband? Or whatever question you may have, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit, he'll lead us and he'll guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit will. 
So this is for why we want the Holy Spirit in our life. He'll lead us and guide us into all truth. Um, and um, well, you know, there in that same verse, uh, to have here when the Spirit of Truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. For well, He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit will show you things of the future. The Holy Spirit will. He'll show you things to come. We see that right there. Let's look at a few other things. We've seen the comforter. He abides with us. He's in us. He'll teach us all things. He'll bring things back to our remembrance. He convicts the world of sin. He testifies of Jesus. He guides us into all truth. When you don't know what to do, what to, the goes, that say, Lord, show me by your spirit what I'm to do. This is what the Holy Spirit is for. The Bible tells us that, that he'll guide us into all truth. You know, they were saying when he would come, because at the time that Jesus was talking to his disciples, the Holy Spirit had not come. But of course, he's come now. He came on the day of Pentecost, and the scripture tells us that. And all of these things the scripture tell us um, about the Holy Spirit and what he's done. Um, I want you to turn your Bibles to Romans, the 8th chapter. We need the Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit in your life. And the devil knew that the Holy Spirit would help the people of God and that they would do warfare, the people of God, against him. So he brought confusion in about the Holy Spirit. When you think about it, man, the Holy Spirit and so forth, the devil brought so much confusion in about the Holy Spirit and so forth, to try to scare people about the Holy Spirit for it's not receiving the Holy Spirit. There's so much confusion about the Holy Spirit because he knew that the Holy Spirit was given to help God's people here on earth while they were here on earth until they went to heaven. While you're here on earth, the Holy Spirit has been given. That's God inside you. You know, there's the God, and there's God the Father who reigns supreme. Then there's Jesus, uh, who the Father sent to die for our sins so that we can go to be with him at the end of our lives in heaven. But then it was God, the Holy Spirit, that was sent uh, in our lives so that we can walk in victory. We can walk in God's ways. We can walk in truth. We can be victorious. We can be encouraged. We can be strong. We can know the ways of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit will bring things back to our remembrance. He will convict us of sin. He would lead and guide us into all truth. And the devil knew that, so he didn't want the Holy Spirit in the lives of God's children. So he brought confusion. Man, there's so much confusion has been in the body of Christ about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and money. That, that's the, thing. the devil knew what would help destroy his kingdom. And that's what he brings confusion on. And I'll tell you, my friend, you can receive the Holy Spirit, and you should receive the Holy Spirit. Let's look at another, where I told you to go to Romans chapter 8. They're talking about the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8. I want us to see something here. It's all so good, but we'll just start, um, let's start in verse 26 for the sake of time. Say, so likewise, the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, and you'll see it's capitalized there, it should be capitalized anyway, this, the word Spirit there. Um, when it's capitalized, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. When you see a small S for Spirit, 
you know, only talking about the human spirit or your spirit. Say, but likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Um, the spirit helpeth our infirmities. The word infirmities there is weaknesses. Uh, say, but the spirit is talking about the Holy Spirit prior to this point. Then you don't start off the sentence that said likewise, unless you've already been talking about that as a subject. So it says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, or helpeth our weaknesses. For we know not, now check this out, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now it did not say we didn't know what to pray for at all. It says we know not what to pray for as we are. Oh, I like to say as we ought to. You know, I'm from the hood, you know, as you ought to. So you don't know what to pray for as you ought to. So you may know what to pray for, but you don't know exactly what to pray for as you ought. But let's see what it says here. Say, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Say, but the Spirit itself which really should be himself because he's a person. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hey, but the Spirit make intersection, intercession for us, like an interception coming between when the uh, quarterback throws the ball to a receiver and the uh, opponent on another team comes and intercepts the ball, comes between and catches the ball. That's what uh, intercession is. It's coming between there, making intercession. So it teaches us here, say, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. How? For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I may have an idea, say, something is going on, you know, say, on my job. But I don't know what it, what it is. I have a co-worker trying to get me fired so he can get my position or what have you. But I can pray in the spirit. Now, I don't know that this co-worker is trying to get me fired, coming up with things, going, telling the boss or whatever. Only thing that I know is that I know something is wrong. You know, sometimes you just have a feeling that something is wrong about something, something's not right, but you don't know what it is. But in your heart, you know, man, something's wrong, something's not right. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit comes in and begin to intercede, begin to block that stuff that the devil is trying to do to cause his child to lose their job or whatever. So the Holy Spirit is there uh, interceding. That's, that's giving an example of something when we don't know what to pray for as we are. It'd be something going on in your marriage. You don't know what it is. But it's something's not right. And you begin to intercede in the Spirit. I'm going to just intercede in the Spirit. This is why the Holy Spirit is given. To so just begin to intercede in the Spirit. The devil's trying to come and and destroy your marriage and to take it into the realm of the void. They were just praying the Spirit. Man, I'm telling you, you got a powerful weapon when you don't really know what you should be praying for, but the Holy Spirit does. Look what it says. For we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit knows. And he begins to come in and pray on our, our behalf. Also, um, we see here where it stated that the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. He helps to strengthen us. Yes. You know the devil don't want you to be strong, but the Holy Spirit helps to strengthen you. It helps you to pray for things that you don't really know what it is. And I said, something's going on with my child. I don't know what it is, but Lord, you know. You just begin to pray in the Spirit. So I'm just going to pray in the Spirit. And it could be for anything. Your child, your spouse, or whatever, family member on your job, or anything that pertains to your life. You just begin to intercede in the Spirit. Verse 27, 
said, he that searches the heart, that's God the Father that searches the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, that be you, according to the will of God. And, verse 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Sometimes we just take this verse out of context and just go, well, all things work together for good. Yeah, well, that's true in its setting, in its context. It works together for good because you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you spend time praying in the Spirit. Therefore, regardless of what that old devil tries to do, the Holy Spirit is ahead of the game. Yeah, he's ahead of him. He's got him cut off. So, oh, no, the Holy Spirit got, has got the Holy Spirit, so he knows and sees everything. Oh, no, I see what's coming down the road. The devil, you're not going to do that. And you're praying in the Spirit. You cut that thing off. You cut that thing off because the Holy Spirit knows exactly the plan and the plots of the devil. And because you're praying in the Spirit, you're cutting off the enemy attack. Therefore, it's going to work together for your good, whatever the devil tries to do. This is what it's saying. So we know that all things work together for our good because we love God. We're called according to his purpose and because we allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us. We allow the Holy Spirit to, to intercede on our behalf. When we talk about the Holy Spirit praying through us, we're talking about praying in your heavenly language, praying in other tongues. This is why the devil fights against it. So many people who desire to receive the Holy Spirit or who don't understand it. I don't know about that old tongue stuff. That old, you know, people even say tongues of the devil. Or tongues have passed away. Say, man, tongues have passed away. That's of the devil. I tell you, that devil does a lie. Praise God. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Jude. Jude is the last book in the Bible before Revelation. Revelation is actually the last book of the Bible. But it's the last book before Revelation. It's a small book. It's called Jude. In the book of Jude, you have to say amen. In the book of Jude, so that's a very, very small book. Most of us are not even familiar with it. But look in verse 20. It says, but you, beloved, talking to the people of God, who calls beloved, this God's family, God's loved one. Say, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. That's like an exercising word, to build up, to strengthen yourself. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying in the Spirit. Say, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, by praying in the Holy Ghost. I brought this out because we actually build up ourselves, or we strengthen. That word build up means to strengthen. Say, but you, my brother and sister, you strengthen yourself by praying in the Holy Ghost. You build up yourself. You strengthen yourself. Like saying, I'm going to, to the gym to work out. Okay, great. You know that that's going to strengthen your muscles, going to strengthen your body and so forth. And that's the way that it is when you're praying in the Holy Spirit. You can see how going, uh, praying in the Holy Spirit is going to the gym. That I'm going to work out, but I'm just working out spiritually. We build up ourselves. We strengthen ourselves. We make ourselves strong by praying in the Holy Ghost. This is why the enemy don't want us to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is why he don't want us to pray in the Spirit. So he'll bring all kind of confusion and say, oh, that's crazy, that looks crazy, and, and so forth. And uh, 
That sounds crazy. Don't get into the other tongue. That's for them more holy folk. You know, the more Pentecostal folks, that's not for you. You're a dignified person or whatever. But you let the devil trick you. You better receive the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us that God has given the Holy Spirit for us uh, and to us so that we could be strong. You don't have to worry about uh, receiving some kind of Spirit that's not of God, something is wrong, you know. Uh, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? We simply receive the Holy Spirit by asking God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit by asking God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Turn to Luke chapter 11. Now, most of us are familiar with this passage of Scripture, really, but we just haven't read it all the way down. But starting in verse 9, it says, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Most of us have heard of that. Seek, and you shall find, knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If a son, a person has a son, and that son asks, Mom, Daddy, will you give me a piece of bread? I'm hungry. So ask bread of any of you that's a father. Will you give him a rock? Say, hey, I'm not going to give him no bread. I'm going to give him a rock. Let me go outside and find a brick. So I give this fellow a brick. I'm not going to give him no bread. Say, so will a father do that? Say, or oh, if he asks him for a fish, will he for a fish give him a poison snake? Will he give him a serpent? Say, no, I'm not going to give my child a snake. Would you give your daughter or son a snake? If they ask you for a piece of fish, you fry some fish. Would you give them a snake? You wouldn't do that? So if he should ask you for an egg, would you give him a poison the scorpion? They ask you to give him an egg, would you give him a scorpion? You would, if you wouldn't do that, verse 13 says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children in our nature as compared to his. So if you being evil in your fallen nature, how much more, look at this now, verse 13, how much more shall your heavenly Father, this is Jesus, writing is in red, how much more, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Jesus gives an example and gives an illustration right here in verse 11, a chapter 11 says, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Only thing you got to do is ask. To ask God, I want you to hear this, to ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and for the Father not to do it, he's saying that I would be like evil man. Say, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to them that ask me? How much more? It's nothing but a trick of the devil to think that the Father God won't give the Holy Spirit to whomever asks him. I don't care what your experience has been, what has happened. You cannot justify to say God did not give the Holy Spirit to you if you ask him. Because he will. And of course, there's uh, different things that transpire when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it may not have happened to you, but it's not because the Father didn't give you the Holy Spirit. You just did not receive properly, or what have you. And there are some that's watching me now that needs to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can receive right there at home. 
for us it may be easier uh, for some uh, to come in person. You can come next week or whatever. And you can come, you can get here today before we leave. And we'll minister to you. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know something that hurts my heart? for people to have uh, gone for years wanting to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Been taught that they need to tarry, that they need to wait. The people in the beginning tarried because the Holy Spirit had not been given. Tarry just means to wait. See, they tarried for the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and filled the room with the sound of a rushing mighty wind and, and cloven tongues as a fire set upon each other because they heard them speaking in other tongues and as the Spirit gave them utterance. Anybody who wants to receive the Holy Spirit can receive the Holy Spirit. Man, I would probably say, and I may not have it accurate, but I would probably say for at least 20 years, for the past 20 years, anybody that I prayed for who wanted to receive the Holy Spirit has received the Holy Spirit. It's just a matter of, well, I'm confident in it. So it's a matter of having faith in the Word of God, knowing that God, I know that my Father's not going to lie. He said that he was going to give the Holy Spirit. So I know the Holy Spirit is going to manifest himself when the person asks. So I know the Holy Spirit is going to come and manifest itself. Sometimes individuals are inexperienced in ministering the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so they can sometimes confuse people because they're not quite experienced themselves in ministering the Holy Spirit. And it makes people think, well, maybe the Lord didn't give the Holy Spirit or, or whatever. You know, I didn't receive, I asked God. Nonsense. That's the same as a person wanting to accept Jesus Christ in their heart as their personal Savior. They say, well, you know, I, I asked God to save me to come into my heart, but it really didn't help. That's nonsense. Do you know how bad God, the Father, sent his son Jesus to down the cross for your sins? to shed his blood. Do you think for one iota of a second that God does not want you saved or he's going to hesitate or play games with you when it comes to salvation? Absolutely not. That's nonsense to think that God wouldn't save you and you desire to be saved. After all that God has done and sent in Jesus and he bore you know, uh, uh, his, his, himself on the cross, bore our sins on the cross in his body to be saved, and God is going to hesitate on you being saved? Nothing but a doctrine of the devil. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. Man, you mean that Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit into the earth to strengthen us so that we can keep ourselves built up and strong and that devil has tricked you to tell you that God has not given you the Holy Spirit or he wants you to wait. Nothing but lies of the devil. Nothing but lies of the devil. You can receive the Holy Spirit and you can receive the Holy Spirit now. You don't have to wait till next week or next month. You can receive the Holy Spirit right now. There are many people who've gotten filled with the Holy Spirit, people praying with them on the phone or whatever, ministering to them on the phone or whatever. Many have received the Holy Spirit just by themselves. Only thing you got to do is just get with God alone. Close off everything else. In other words, focus in on Jesus. Get in a quiet place, a place of worship. And uh, just say, Father, you said that if we would ask you for the Holy Spirit, you would give us the Holy Spirit. And I'm asking you, Lord, to fill me with the Holy Spirit right now. I receive him by faith right now in Jesus' name. And just begin to worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord and allow that language
to come up from your spirit. Just begin to speak that language by faith. And the reason that I mentioned about the language is because the Bible tells us, and we looked at it the last time. You can say it again, but we looked at it the last time. I don't have time to get into it today, but we may do it again on next time. That when the Holy Spirit came, that the people began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God would get them to other. Now, some people, they're afraid of that, and, and uh, you know, they don't want to remember having a pastor friend saying that when he first got filled with the Holy Spirit, he asked God to give him the Holy Spirit without tongue. Well, you don't do it your way. That was just out of ignorance, out of his ignorance. Uh, God's going to give you the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in other tongues because you need to be in the praying in other tongues because the Bible tells us that you don't even know what to pray for as you are. And plus, you can praise God in your heavenly language. You need to be able to praise God in your heavenly language, to talk to God where the devil don't have a clue of what you are saying because you are talking directly to the Lord. Also, in Jude 20, it told us we build up ourselves on our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. So you need to be strong. So the Holy Spirit is given for that. Now, we looked at several things that the Holy Spirit does. So praying in tongues is just one of the things that the Holy Spirit allows us to do. But the, he comforts us. He abides with us. He brings things back to our remembrance. He leads and guides us into all truth. There are so many things. He helps us to witness. We didn't really look at that verse, but that's in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where the scripture said, Well, you'll be witnesses unto me. You know, Jerusalem, Judea, and the other most parts of the earth. It helps you to be a better witnesser for the Lord, the Holy Spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit. Just like people who are lost. And who are going to die and go to hell if they don't accept Jesus. Just like they want Jesus, they need Jesus. They may not know that they want him, but they do. So, you know, you want to have, and that's a figure of speech that said, no, you want Jesus as your personal Savior. You don't want to live in this earth and die without Jesus. So you need Jesus. You want Jesus. The same way that we need and want Jesus, and thank God we have him, those who do have him, you want also to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You want the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit will make all the difference in your life. He'll strengthen you. He'll help you. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Some people make so many terrible mistakes. They make decisions that are not of God, where if they had the Holy Spirit in their life leading them and guiding them, the outcome would have been different. And I can name a whole bunch of things. People have left jobs and changed jobs, changed churches, uh, divorced, changed spouses, and everything else. Uh, not by the leading of God. I'm not saying every time it wasn't. But many times it wasn't the leading of the Lord. They didn't have the Holy Spirit in their life. They loved Jesus, and that was it. They loved Jesus. So they did what they felt was better, but they didn't have the, the God, the comforter, the spirit of truth in their life to show them things to come, to say, hey, if you do this, now this is going to happen, or if you do that, such and such is going to transpire. So we want the Holy Spirit. We embrace him. He's God, God, the Holy Spirit. We worship him. We invite his presence in. His presence is actually here now. I want to pray for you right now. But can we worship the Lord for a moment right there at home where you are? Just lift up your hands and tell God you love him. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us and being in there. We worship you, oh God. Yes. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, Spirit of truth, comforter. We worship you, oh Prince of Peace. We adore you. Thank you for being the God of our life. 
Thank you for leading us and guiding us into all truth, teaching us all things, bringing all things back to our remembrance. Thank you for building us up and strengthening us. Thank you for interceding on our behalf, causing us to pray for things that we know not of. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. I want to pray for some people, different categories. I want to first pray for individuals who have never received this precious Holy Spirit. Just ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Get in a quiet place. Block other people out. You may want to get on your knees. You don't have to be on your knees, but sometimes it helps you to build a, a place partial peace. Yeah, just get into a posture of worship. Just love the Lord. Don't let anything distract you. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. According to Luke 11, just do exactly what the Word says. Jesus said it. We know how to give good gifts unto our children. How much more would the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who would ask Him? Just say, Father, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. Those who are watching me, and you want to receive, with the evidence of speaking in another tongue, don't let the devil shortchange you. You need to be able to pray in other tongues so you can pray for the things that come against your life. That you know not what of. The Bible tells us that we don't know what to pray for as we ought. And this is also the way that we build up ourselves and strengthen ourselves by praying in the Holy Ghost, by praying on, on our most holy faith. So, Lord, for those who are watching, I pray for them. Those who desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I set myself in agreement that they will receive the Holy Spirit right now. If I know you've already given it. But I agree and decree that they receive the Holy Spirit now. With the evidence of praying in other tongues, as the Spirit of God will get out of us. In Jesus' name. Now, as you're worshiping the Lord, just begin to speak the language. Don't try to understand the language with your mind. Just speak in faith. Just speak. It may sound like baby talk or jitters. Just begin to pray. Just begin to pray.
friend, if you prayed that prayer in sincerity, then you are saved. You are born again, and we welcome you to the family of God. Give me a call. Let me know what has happened. Let me know that you've accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior. The number is area code 205 833 4415. Give me a call. Let me know. Hey, I prayed the prayer of salvation with Pastor Broderick, and I've accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. You can also call and give your testimony that you received the Holy Spirit. If you received the Holy Spirit, give us a call. Let us know. And if we can be of help by sending some uh, spiritual material to you, such as a Bible or any kind of spiritual help that you may need to help you concerning this, you may want some information on the Holy Spirit. Well, hey, just call us, let us know, and we'll be more than happy to send you some spiritual help. We love you. We thank God so much for you. I thank you so much for joining me concerning the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue to talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit on next time we have one at the most two more times to talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unless the Holy Spirit says differently, we're going to talk and get further into the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. The devil will try to stop you because he wants to keep you weak in life. He wants to keep you weak. So he knows if he can scare you or confuse you, that you're not going to see the Holy Spirit. If, you, if you're scared and confused, you're not going to see the Holy Spirit. But you don't have to be afraid or confused. That's why Jesus stated there in Luke chapter 11, and said, if you being even know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your, Holy, shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask Him? But He's not going to give you some kind of evil, foreign spirit He's going to give you the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a blessing to your life all the days of your life. It's going to help you as a father, mother, husband, wife, as a woman of God, a single woman, a single man. It's going to help you on your job. It's going to help you in your relationship. You need the Holy Spirit. He's your God. That's what the Bible tells us. He's our partner. He's our God. He comes alongside of us and helps us in life. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. We love you and adore you. Thank you. Thank you for being the biggest part of our lives. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you today. trust that you've been blessed and you're not going to want to miss next week as we continue to talk about the Holy Spirit. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Amen. But make sure you receive the Holy Spirit. Make sure he's in your day. Praise God. God bless you. You've been blessed by the second teaching on the ministry of the Holy Spirit, a comforter that abides in you. Now, if you prayed that prayer of salvation with Pastor Hennington and received your salvation, please give us a call at 205-833-4415. Counselors will be waiting to speak with you. If you've joined us this morning on YouTube, Facebook, our website. We appreciate you tuning in and we pray that you have been blessed today. Continue to sow into the ministry. Continue to sow into the word and watch God change your life. To sow this morning, please go to our website at www.integritybiblechurch.org forward slash giving or by mail at 216 Roebuck Drive, Birmingham, Alabama, 35215. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. Let's just declare that we know that God is always doing great things at Integrity Bible Church. Have a great week.